everyone, Joe here from ActionX. Welcome to What's in the Tuber. Welcome back, or welcome as well if you're watching this High School Musical, the musical, the series, season three review, spoiler free. Uh, if you're unaware, um, for about the past nine weeks, I've done a lot of stuff in the world of High School Musical. We've done our eight season three episode reviews where we went into detail. I reviewed each one uh, as it was coming out the series. And then last week we did our season four predictions video where I talked about everything that I wanted to see in season four. It was a lot. Um, I almost forgot I had to do this review, and I'm not trying to say, like, I forgot the show already, I'm not trying to say that at all, but, but me merely it was the reasoning of I had a ton of other things to do, and as well as a lot of the shows that we were reviewing, um, for this upcoming fall season, uh, were coming back, so, like, Rookie, Rookie Feds, um, also realized Starker was off the air for a bit, and I just had a lot of less to, stuff to do, so I completely forget, oh, damn, I had to talk about season three in a non-spoiler way. Because that's usually how we do to wrap up the year. Because there are some people who have been busy this summer have not yet seen the third season of High School Musical, the musical, the series. And you're wondering, well, is season three worth it? I've heard a lot of, you know, new things about it. New often is scary. Does that mean it's bad? Does it mean it's great? Does it mean it's good? And for me, going into it, uh, also, yeah, remember, I, I will not be spoiling anything beyond the first episode. So uh, I will only be talking about things that you see in the first episode. Uh, everything else beyond that point is, you know, very much... Not, not existent to me. Well, maybe one day we'll talk about it more, but until then, for now, season three as a whole, first impressions wise, no real context given for the season. I think it was really good. I, I, honestly, at the end of the day, I think I'm going to hold, hold it more to season one because it, like, the thing is, season three is a radically different show, but it's the same show. If that makes sense. It's it's a summer season. So you kind of get to play around with the fact that there will be characters that you know and love from the first two years that are not here in season three. That's apparent by the poster. A lot of faces are omitted this season, but we have a lot of new faces to kind of, you know, keep things interesting, keep things fresh um, for better or for worse. Um, but, you know, it, it allows there to be new dynamics, new developments, new, new conflicts, new relationships. And it helps kind of, you know keep things going uh, a little bit fresh because season two was a little bit of a of a whirlwind because they filmed a part of it during pre-covid and then covid hit, and then things happened with the world olivia got famous and you know they had to rewrite some stuff because of covid and then there was a lot of questioning about that they did their best and season two i was actually surprised it came together the way it did even if it, it being also the longest season of the three so far because one was 10 two was 12 and then um, this season was only eight, which honestly, it's weird because of how it balanced it out, if it, it, it seemed like. Um, but now going into this season, I, again, it was another one of the factors that this really snuck up on me. I knew it was coming. I knew season three was on the way. And, you know, we've heard tidbits about it. And then, like, we got the big announcements that, oh, yeah, Corbin Blue's coming back. Um, Jason Earls, a Disney Channel um, alumni, was going to be joining the, se the se season. We're getting a new cast member. They were doing Frozen the Musical, as well as playing homage to HSM2 and Camp Raw. All of that on paper sounds amazing. It sounds great. The end result was still really, really good. I, I, I won't be... I'm going to give it a very light grade. It's not... The best of the three, it definitely is not. There's some, some really standout moments. But as a whole season, it kind of falls back into the whole... Uh, it, it, the, the, it was kind of like the dividing um, the time and everything, like just the pacing everything. It was a little all over the place. You know, it, it really was. I know they were restricted again, and I know they had like... They were figuring out how, how the correct pacing was, and maybe the eight episode order kind of hurt them. I'm like the pacing that like, we had to like either cut some things out or rush some things going. But, and honestly, certain things they made in the latter half were like, for me, I'm still debating about like two weeks after removed from the finale. I'm still debating about it. But, you know, at the end of the day, I think it's still really good. It's still entertaining. You know, it's still keeping that energy going. And it only gets you more and more excited for what will happen next time around. Uh, but going into a, a little bit more deeper uh, in terms of the yard. Again, I mentioned before, this is a summer season. So uh, <clears throat> we're not in East High this season. Uh, the Wildcats are on summer break. Um, we, we And we pick up months after where season two left off. Uh, Ricky is dating that girl, that like that really dick back girl from season two. I forgot her name already. That's like, okay, good. I, I forgot her name already. Um, e EJ and Gina are dating. Nini's kind of like beginning to like really uh, attempt to explore 
actually making r music, uh, being very serious about the, about the um, the passion about it, uh, and then you have everyone else like can just try to enjoy their summer, you know. Um, besides EJ, who has already graduated, everyone's just like enjoying their summer. Um, Gina's kind of like the Vanessa, not the Vanessa, the Gabriella of the group. We're like, yeah, this is the first summer where she gets to stay somewhere. She doesn't have to worry about moving or worry about like you know starting a new life next fall. Like, no, this is the first summer where she can have a traditional summer vacation and that is something that excites her as well as having her first boyfriend having her first you know family of friends having like a, a group she's actually belongs to and all of that is very expressful in the in the first episode and and that's kind of how we kick start the season where the, the gang are off to summer camp um, a camp that ej has talked about privately has opened up slots and majority of the wildcats are going sans big red sans seb sans a lot of the other you know I'm not going to call them the background dancers, but like kind of like the background fill-ins that the rest of the Wildcats had during the first two seasons. Like, they're not involved here. They're, they're not involved here. Um, so, um, at first, Ricky isn't going to go because apparently her, um, her, his girlfriend's parents was going to put him up for two weeks in, a, in a, a ski resort in the mountains, which I'm like, brah. First of all, if I was a parent, I would be like, there would be no freaking way. I'm going to let my daughter's boyfriend come with us on a family vacation for two weeks, paid everything. Forget it. I'm not doing that at all. Like, this is high school. Like, you know, there ain't no chance this guy is even going to be in your life after high school. And spoilers, uh, this is all in the first episode. Don't worry about it. They break up. So I'm like, yeah, there's there was absolutely no way I was going to pay. I, I, would, I would pay for anyone. And I was like, you know what high school students are up to? Like, not a Disney Channel show or anything like that, but, like, you know what they're really up to? And, and you know, when they got some privacy, you know what they're up to? Uh, I'm pretty sure they would have made them sleep in separate beds, but, like, you know, if Ricky was of, of that mindset, come on. You know what, 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 what would have happened? Um, and, and, and also the big spiel of, like, you know, why this summer camp season was so special is that they were going to have a very special guest a very, that also connects to our Wildcats, you know, origins and where they're coming from is that a legacy high school musical actor was coming over to produce. And also another thing I need to mention, this is the most meta season of the three where the whole premise, and again, this is all in the first episode, so um, don't, hurt, don't hurt me about this, is that Corbin Blue has been sent by Disney themselves. So, yeah, in the show... Obviously, it goes without saying because, like, of course, they said before, like, all the high school musical movies are, like, our, like in our universe, they're just movies. Like, you know, there, there are the real actors. This is the real actor. And I forgot to mention, yeah, Disney's a real entity. They're, they're, I don't know why I was thinking for a while, like, oh, Disney doesn't exist. I don't know why I was thinking like that. But Disney exists, and they want to make a Disney Plus docu documentary special about the first official production of the stage version officially approved by Disney for Frozen i.e. Frozen the Musical, so they're making Disney Plus Presents Frozen the Musical, the documentary, in terms of our, our show, where it's like we have High School Musical, the musical, the series. So it's like, it's 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 hilarious how super meta, it, and it's also a reality show setting, so I'm like, all the reality show, show tropes are going to be included as well. And um, yeah, it's all, it all makes for a good time here. And of course, obviously, the Wildcats are excited to be around. Um, another alum from the HSM world. This is the s second time they've been, third time for us, like us as viewers, to see that sort of, you know, callback. But it's not as peachy as it sounds. And that's where the whole season kind of um, kickstarts from there, to be honest with you. Again, I'm not, I'm not trying to spoil anything beyond that those um, those um that first episode that really is. But it does give a, a pretty good interest in, like, you know, uh, where the season's going. As well as, you know, you have the summer camp motif where, like, you get to bring in other people from other walks of life, different experiences to come in and kind of play around with our Wildcats. And, you know, our newcomers, which is um, Jet, Max, a.k.a. Gadget, and also Val, um, them getting thrown into the mix. It does... It doesn't spice things up a lot, but it definitely gives, like, you know, some new relationships, some new, like, character development, like, figuring out these new characters, as well as bringing more, much more, more stronger voices onto the cast. And I wish this was spoiler-free, uh, spoiler filled because I have a really good, um, uh, a really good, like, um, sentiment to all that, like, what I just mentioned when we get to the end of the season, but I can't spoil that because, obviously, spoilers. Um, the whole point of view is to watch this review is to make sure, hey, I don't get spoiled by anything because I've been busy this summer, actually having a real summer. Um, yeah, so going to the characters specifically, because th th that's the whole jive of the story. Oh, 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 before I continue, like, the whole premise of the story, I, I really enjoyed it. I really did. Um, I will say this, um, Jason Earl's character, very underutilized. Like, he's there for, like, comedic re effect, but, like, re in reality, he's not used that much more. He really isn't. It's unfortunate. But, uh, it is what it is at the end of the day. It is what it is. Uh, but going to the characters specifically, 
Uh, we gotta talk about the outlier off the bat, you know, um, because everyone's gonna talk about Nini and like, you know, that, you know, oh, I heard Nini wasn't in that much of the season. What's going on? Is she gonna go? I'm not as spoil the end or how it all ends, but yes, Nini's role was greatly, is greatly reduced this season. She is not in it that much. She's in a few of the episodes of the eight. She's not in the whole eight because it's, it, it, I didn't know what the expectation was because they, they, they wouldn't publicly reveal what was the plan with Nini going into the season. They know like, if anything was to happen to Olivia, if she doesn't want to come back, we respect the decision. We have other directions to take the show in. But, you know, this would serve as a, a as a pretty good goodbye to her, a goodbye arc for her. And honestly, with those words said, and those were said around episode one time period, so I'm going to grandfather that in and say, yeah, it's still canon. They The way they wrote it, and that's why I said at the start, like, this was a little rush in certain point. I, I do believe, like, I will say that Nini's part in this was, uh, like, her entire storyline i'll say that much like for the season it was very rushed and keep in mind um this was like pandemic was kind of ending you know so like you know, um tours were coming back up olivia again like i said during the season two review olivia blew the hell up during, during the pandemic time period she made a lot of great singles she blew up on the around the world she's like one of like the top youngest artists right now and i'm just like let's freaking go baby let's go like i'm, I'm so happy for her but that does mean that that, that comes to the cause where like she wants to focus more on her music career like you don't want to take a break from your music just to do acting when you know music is the thing that you know is killing her like obviously the ogs like us we know like oh she was on disney channel doing i, I think another show um during like that was after my time uh, on it and then she came on this show so like we know her as like the disney girl like you know we know that like, she very much was part of this tv world that was one of the lucky few to break out into the mainstream and is now killing it i'm not surprised that she wants to continue that path but she wants also to give a respectful goodbye to I, I guess the show that really kind of put more more attention on her, put more spotlight on her. Um, so I, I was I, I appreciate we I as a fan appreciate that she just didn't pull a hey goodbye I'll see you guys whenever. Uh, but no, she came back. She did a little bit of time. Uh, she did everything that Nini had like the moments we had a Nini. Even though I say they're kind of rushed the whole storyline aspect of it, the scenes we still got her with most of them were very sincere. They were very um, truthful to her character, and it definitely could have been just part of a larger storyline with her had we gotten more time with her but in her very limited role, screen time it, it works you know it works with her character it works to where we left left her off in season two and you know it kind of is just the reality of life like you just never really know what's going to happen next for you and you never really know what you know what direction you know they're going to take you next and by the time we get to the end of her road it, it's bittersweet a little bit it's definitely not the way i would have wrote it off but again like get, considering the restrictions and the constrictions and you know also like having to work with the larger story of like the regular cast going out i think they did the the best they could with, with what was available i'm still gonna say it was rushed because it's unavoidable because you only have so much time with her so it's like you only you can only call it rush but at least what you do get to see at the end was memorable it was accepted and it definitely would be it's bittersweet to to to, to have those scenes at the end again i'm not trying to like say what the hell happened in it but you know, um, this is a very serviceable goodbye arc for Nini. And, you know, that uh, it's felt throughout the entire cast um, towards the end. Like, not just the art, like the cast character, but also with the cast. Like, you know, it's it, it's always hard to, 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 to see someone go. Like, someone that you worked with and also was part of your life for, for a good amount of time. Like, just be gone. Like, it, it, it can be it can be very impactful. But, like, what whatever, whatever, whatever phrases the show must go on. Um, for everyone else, uh, let's get let's get to it. Like our our, our actual returning Wildcats, um, Ricky. It's funny how like I, I, it's how much of a regression I had with Ricky this season. Like for me, as reviewing him, not in terms of his character. Like for me, there were moments where like I kind of was iffy on Ricky's development. Like it, it, it still felt like Ricky was lost. Um, after season one, season two, but it, it kind of felt like for me, like it kind of like it was sporadic decisions and again like you know when you have a character like ricky that's been through so much he broke up with his girlfriend he went for an entire musical to get her back and also discovered something along himself in the way dealing with his parents divorce uh having to deal with the rocky second relationship with nini and then also having to like deal with like also being in a musical without her like there was just so many up and down changes with his life that i do understand like yeah he is going to make some sporadic decisions without much of a say like dating um, that girl was like, oh, wow, well, Ricky, just because she gives you the time of day doesn't mean she's girlfriend material, bro. Come on. You are blinded here. You just, you just want the attention. You just want the companionship. 
and that's kind of how it was. And then going into season three, um, like right, properly when we get to see him at the summer camp, um, the the things they put him through are like, it's kind of half and half. Or like, you know, you, for me personally, you could have done half of the stuff with him and then the other half you kind of could have done without. It's also the fact that, you know, this season you kind of had like the main quartet become just like the trio. Like, you know, the poster quartet was Ricky, Nini, EJ, and um, Gina. Now it's just Ricky, Gina, and EJ. And it's it's different a little bit because like you, you lost that presence. So you're able to like spend more time with him. And it doesn't really seem like, um, it, it just seems like, yeah, he's just not in an emotionally like stable place. I'm not saying it's good or bad. I'm just saying it's not emotionally stable. Like there are episodes where like he is very much the same Ricky we know and love. And then there's episodes where like he is not that Ricky. And it's always the hung up on like this one recently discovered thing, which I'm like, it gives me so much Total Drama World Tour vibes where like it kind of feels forced a little bit at times. And if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. But it kind of feels a little forced for me because, like, yeah, there was some setup to it, but it wasn't, like, very well done because you were, you were jumping all over the place with storylines. Um, I could see, in, I, I could have, I could have easily for me say, like, okay, this could make sense, you know, rationally and naturally, but it doesn't, it's not organic enough. It, it really isn't. It definitely did not. Uh, but I, I will, I will say that Ricky's choices um, that are not in that related field. Uh, we're sincere, like, you know, also apparently Ricky was about to be 18, uh, mild spoilers, but like, yeah, he's about to turn 18 years old this season, and I'm just like, damn, I didn't know you, I didn't know you were that old, I thought you, like, I thought, like, the new generation's, like, you know, 16, 17 is when you cap out, well, 17 is when you cap out of graduation, but like, damn, that's early as hell, but anyway, well, he's a legal adult now, so that, that opens up anything, uh, and everything, if, if that, uh, if that paints your boat there. Uh, but overall with Ricky, I, like, I, like the last two seasons, I definitely f was very positive on, on him. Like, but I feel like this season, like I kind of, my opinion of him was kind of hurt a little bit. And maybe that was the theme of it. Like, you know, we had to like make Ricky a little bit more damaged, a little bit more emotionally open to things. And, uh, it, it definitely succeeded, but at the end of the day, I wasn't really a big fan of like certain directions they, they put for him and, um, certain decisions they made for him. Uh, Gina, the new, our new, our, our new golden girl. This was Gina season. This, this definitely was. Even the first, um, the, we got to the first, um, the first song, like her first solo song. I forgot it was in this episode or the uh, second episode, but she has, a solo, she has a lot of singing this season. Cause again, you don't have Nini anymore. And you know, so that means like in, it's clear as day, like, yeah, this is Gina's time to shine. This is like, you know, definitely her time to like come in and show us what, what she's got. And she did. She very much did. Um, the romantic relationship stuff was like, okay, I understand. Like it was trying to be a callback to HSM2. What her and EJ deal with this season is very much a callback to HSM2, which if you remember that movie, you kind of have a feeling what I'm talking about. I won't be very specific with it, but they, it's not a perfect, it's not a perfect summer for them. It really isn't. It's never going to be a perfect summer. There's always obstacles and hoops. Uh, but regardless of that, she knows like, this is my chance being on a, on, on Disney plus a very well-known streaming service by this point in the universe. Um, this is her platform to like really blow it up. And also there's no competition this time. No offense. You know, I'm not trying to downsize Courtney or Ashley. Cause you know, they both slay in the season as well. I'm not trying to like be that negative here, but it is also very much the fact of, you know, this is Gina's time to shine. This is definitely the season where she gets to sh the shine the most, uh, with her musical talent, with her character. And you do. Uh, it, it just felt like all the romantic stuff that, you know, they kind of like sprung under the season, like, you know, doing another, like, I don't even want to call it a love triangle, but like something similar to that, but like just having her in that forefront, it, 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 it has so much benefits, but it also had a couple of negatives, um, that like, we don't need, like, I know it's a teen show, like you gotta have rom romance drama. It's kind of unavoidable. I get that. I understand that you kind of have to keep that going. Cause that's just a reality of life. Uh, but the thing is, is that certain, again, similar to what I said about Ricky, like certain decisions, like, was it the right decision? I don't know. Like, I really don't know. I don't, I'm not a big fan of it. I'm not saying like, oh, this was an amazing decision. I'm not like at the edge of my seat. Okay, I'm not a shipper. Like, I'm really not like, you know, I'll, I'll just be frank. I am not a shipper of anything. Like, you know, I, I'm doing the rookie right now. I have to cater to the Chenford fan. Not because I am a Chenford fan. I have my theories about it. Like, I'm allowed to say I have a theory that they could be together, but I also have a theory that they also don't have to be together. Uh, and I, I just don't belong to any camp of shipping because, like, I, I just, I just don't know. But I, I really don't know. But it's like I'm more shipping all over again. Uh, if you ever anyone remembers the X and Y days, like, oh my god, that was like a high. And I, I live for another one again with Chenford. But anyway, with here, like, I'm not a big fan of shipping. I, I really am not. I'm never one to say like, oh, I want these two characters pair, or I want these two characters pair. Like, as long as it organically works for your story, and these are this is the right direction for the characters to make, 
is what I consider like, okay, this is this is good. This is good. Here, it's like, I, I understand what the callbacks they were trying to go for. I understand what the decisions they were trying to make. It just, at the end of the day, it didn't really feel like, for me, the best in the in, in the world to do. And maybe I could be wrong. Maybe next season, like, when I come back here, like, when I do the season four review, I'm like, I am completely wrong. This was the best decision ever. I really don't know. I really don't know. But overall, in terms of, like, not talking about the romantic stuff, Gina as a character really killed it this season. There was a lot for her to do. There was a lot of motive. There was a lot of development for her, uh, with her taking like really big strides in her, in her, um, solo career. Like, you know, not solo career. I'm trying to like be the star, trying to like show what she's got, what she got, what she's made of. And it all paid off. It all really paid off. And I, I was really, really happy about that part. Uh, EJ, finally, they give my boy some direction. I'm like, final freaking Lee. It's like, the last two seasons, okay, let's say a season and a half. We, he didn't have much to do. He was just there. He just was there. And I was very critical about that And during those episode reviews. He was just there. He did not do much. It wasn't until the second half of season two where it's like, he had a crush on, he had feelings for Gina. And like, you know, he, he sees Gina as more as a friend. Um, that had happened. And, you know, I was like, okay, let's see where that goes in season three. And for the most part, it paid off, you know. He had a lot to do, and it was also a result of, like, we had a much more narrow cast to focus on. The scope was a little bit more focused out this season, so we got more time with EJ. We got more time to see what is his life as a postgraduate. Also, it was a damn shame we never got to see his graduation ceremony. I'm so sorry for him, but um, what was next for him? What was going to be the next thing for him to do now that he's done with high school? How does he even fit into the cast anymore? Because, like, he's not a high school student anymore. He's, he's a graduate. He's not a college student. He hasn't, he, hasn't, he hasn't picked any college plans yet, but he's not a high school student anymore. So, like, what is next for him? This summer camp, like, it felt like, you know, this is his chance to, like, really make a good mark. Because, like, not only is this the camp that he grew up with, but now this is, like, the first year he gets to bring his girlfriend. He gets to bring his friends and, you know, actually have, like, a very tame experience. And I got a little criticism from this about the whole, you know, EJ with Ricky dynamic. Because, like, you know, again, like, they've had not, they have not had a perfect dynamic throughout the entire show. Like, first time we see them, they immediately hate each other. Because, like, you know, EJ's got Nini. Ricky used to date Nini, and he, and he regrets breaking up with her. And he wants her back, but EJ has her. And they have such so many different, like, conflicts throughout the first season. And then season two was, like, you know, with just, like, the separation. Just, like, them trying to, like, work with each other. Like, the, the pain is still there. The torment is still there. And now season three, where we got to understand, like, uh, from the get-go, like, okay, EJ and Gina are in a relationship. Gina briefly did like Ricky in season two, one and two. Those feelings, like, I won't say where they are at, but those are those are feelings that were confirmed on the table already. He's aware of that. And at first, he was super happy that Ricky wasn't going to come to summer camp. He was, like, really happy. Like, he didn't express it, but I know deep down he was happy he wasn't there. Because, like, this gets to be a perfect summer. He gets to have a perfect damn summer with his girlfriend doing this play on Disney+. Plus, and then a conflict is suit. Um, the ones I got to mention is that Ricky comes back. And he's like, fuck. This is not what I want. Ricky, when I'm, whenever EJ is in a relationship, Ricky is always a thorn. And I will say this, it, it, that trend continues. It does not end. Um, and some, in some shape or form. But honestly, they, they gave him a lot to do this season. You know, there was a lot on display. He definitely felt like the Troy of the story where like, he's trying to do his best to impress everyone, to make sure he is being the best person he is. Cause he's got a lot of responsibility on, the, on his shoulder. Like, you know, he's got a lot and you know, he doesn't want to let anyone down and he's trying to make everyone happy and he's trying to make everyone satisfied with his decisions and what he's trying to bring to the table and trying to accomplish for all, all of his efforts. Like I understand that completely. This is the first time I can actually say I relate to EJ and it's just so much pressure. It's so much. And you know, he just doesn't know how much more he could take of it. And I'm not surprised of how many times, you know, he has this, like, you know, just those, like, traditional, like, emotional breakdowns. Like, whether internally or externally, you see that pain throughout the season. And it it, it makes him better as a character because, like, he's human. Because for me, for the first two and ever, a year and a half, I thought he was a robot. I'm trying to, I'm not trying to be mean to him. I'm really not. It's just, like, that was just the presentation of him. That, that really was. Like, when I saw the first promo poster... For um the for season one of the show, I was like, I'm not gonna like EJ at all. I was mostly right, but now I'm like, hey, I dig you, man. I dig, you. I like you. Like you actually have some um, weight to your to your weight to your voice, and I can't wait to see what they'll do with him next. But uh, it was like, thank you. You gave my boy something to do, and I was happy. I was really really happy. Uh, Ashley, I'm gonna just put Ashley next because I, I just I just feel like it. Ashley's um, it's the byproduct for me personally of like. 
you have characters that really shine in previous seasons of an ensemble show and then the next season they're kind of reduced because like they had their moment in the sun and it's kind of like reduced a little bit more uh i feel like that was mostly for ashley this season i feel like ashley got the short end sadly this season uh, compared to others i think next would would compete with would be carlos i guess at points but mostly it was ashley like you know she had her like a lot of shiny moments in season two this time for season three and there's a thing in episode three where it literally explains exactly what i'm saying before like you know you have your big moment and then you kind of have to like take a step down or two because it's understandable you do like you know you've had your time to shine let someone else have their time to shine you know it's not always just about you it's this is not the actual movie where like troy and gabrielle are always the leads it's it's not like that it, it really isn't um but you know she holds her best you know this is a very um changing summer for her she's not with big red for a couple weeks and you know she's kind of thrown into this new environment with new people and certain things get questioned i'll say that much certain things about herself about her personality about her you know her uh, characteristic traits get questioned a little bit and i feel like at the end of the day it comes out changed and that's the part of like growing up when you're in the teenager because you discover new things about yourself that you never thought possible but then once you have that you, you can never really look back because like oh this changes things Small or big, this changes things, and you know how do, how would they express that going forward is still uh, even for the show standard, it's still a big question mark. But you know, it definitely kind of just gives them the, the sense of like these are still all teenagers, they're still growing, they're kids, they're still growing up, they're still gonna change. These are not the people they're gonna be when they're adults. It definitely is most likely not. This for Ashley was part of that change of you know accepting the fact that there is some reduction and there's also going to be some changes as well. That's a part of life. It's really unavoidable but it was nice for her to for them to give ashley that but it's still regardless of that you know fact i still feel like they gave her a little bit of the short end of the stick this season in my opinion i feel like she's like the most uh not underutilized she has her moments but like she's the most less seen of the bunch this season it, it, that's what it felt like um next is courtney um similar similar fashion it was picking up more of the dynamic from season two where you know nini was kind of like mostly isolated for season two with the rest of the characters, like you saw at scenes with with, the, with with her and the others, but it was greatly reduced compared to season one. Season three, it was like you know the 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 the, the power group that was Courtney, Ashley, and Gina. It continues again, like you know it it, it, get, it just gets strengthened this season. Like they're not just friends; they're sisters. You know, they're all they all have some sort of connection with each other, and they all have some sort of you know understanding of each other by this point in the in the show's run. They're like you know they're always gonna stick together. Like you know, but Courtney had to learn mostly about being self-sufficient, being more, you know, um, more singular, more, you know, dependent on herself. There was a lot of moments where like, you know, also again, like similar to, 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 uh, to Ashley, like er, she's not with her boyfriend this season, you know, they're separated right now because of the summer camp. And also they have all, oh, I forgot to mention, they all, they all have like a social media cutoff. Like they cannot use their cell phones throughout the entire camp period, which is hilarious. Uh, but they can. So like, she's really self, self, um, alone this season. Also with no Nini, which has been her best friend for ages. And you get to discover more more about Courtney, more about what makes her tick, what, more about what like motivates her as a person. Because we got a slow build of her from season one to season two, especially now in season three, where like you get to really understand her more, get more into her motivation, more what she, what her principles are, more what her morals are. And I think that makes her a much more rounded character, makes her um, an individual, makes her more uh, more stand out, makes her more independent. And I really that I really appreciate that that sometimes the it's amazing how sometimes like you take a, take takes a very unfortunate untimed thing in our world when it comes to making these productions and making these stories that it it can somehow benefit something else down the road and this was what just for me it's one of those byproducts of like you know this wouldn't have happened if this didn't happen and honestly that was like that was important Carlos it's again he falls in the camp of like you know he doesn't have his boyfriend this season. Uh, you know, he, but he, he's still Carl. He's still like very much the energetic, quirky, very lovable Carlos we know and love. And, you know, that keeps going. Like, I, I feel like more of the season, it was comedic relief and he was trying to be the foil and the whole uh, already aforementioned reality show element they were trying to bring with the Disney Plus the cover, the documentary special that they're producing. And he's kind of a big, um, he's a big proponent of that. He's a big, he has, a, he has a big role to play in that, in that front. Um, but however, what I will mention is that, um, it's same with Ashley. Like, I feel like most times he was just there to act like a foil for another character or to act like a comedic re relief. 
uh, my opinion at least. Uh, it, it, like they had a couple moments with him. I'm not trying to discourage and, and say like, oh, he doesn't have any moments this season. I'm not trying to say that at all. It just, for me, it, it felt too far in between and it, it felt too, too less in my opinion. But uh, regardless of the say, you know, Carlos was always still an ama uh, amazing part. And like Miss Jen always says, um, that that's our that's our guy. That's like the guy that keeps us, you know, all happy and you know, balanced at the end of the day. And you know, honestly, we need a car every every group needs a Carlos. Do I have does my group have a Carlos? I should check it out right now. Um As for the new characters, I won't get too much into them because like those are new and like I want to save them for later down the road. But um Jet, the mysterious Jet, uh, uh Maddox, aka Gadget, and Val right up the gate. They're they were a little bit, you know, um, underwhelming for me, a little bit. In terms of just, like, their first impression, what I'm able to talk about, they was a little underwhelming. It took most of their, like, the, the juicy parts come later in the season. Um, but for me, like, despite an underwhelming start, I think all of them were very serviceable additions to this new chapter in the HSM TMTM -TM, um, story. And I feel like every one of them had, like, a purpose to play, not just for themselves, being their own individual characters, but also trying to help out in other characters' development, helping, helping them figure out things along the way. Which is always imperative. Like, you know, you never want to introduce a character just for the sake of helping another character. You got to make sure they have their own two feet to stand on, and they also have, like, their own story to tell that isn't just satisfying another story. Which, honestly, it makes me happy about the end of the, at the end of the day. Um, but overall, for me, in terms of just that, um, favorite episode aside, I think it's the finale. I think the finale did a very much of a big feat to do as much as they can um, to wrap everything up in the season, wrap up a chapter, um, do do all the usual sh shebangs with the musical. And, you know, it, it, for me, it all it all worked out in the end. It, it all strung together somehow, and it just leaves you entertained for more. And thankfully, we already have season four on the way um, next year. So that's a, that's a big plus. And, um, yeah, it was great to see Corbin again. Uh, Corbin... Uh, I, I haven't seen Corbin since HSM3. It's been so long since we see, I've seen him as a person. He's grown up so much in the past 15, um, 14 years since I last saw him in HSM3. And man, he has aged like fine wine. Like he has aged perfectly. I mean, go get him. I miss the Afro, but I'm like, you know what? You, you, do, you do it young and then after that, you kind of have to grow up. You have to grow up a little bit. Uh, but it was great to see him again. It, it was absolutely great. And uh, his role in the season was very much felt. Again, Jason Earl is very underutilized, very under serviceable. I, I, I think you could have just hired... No offense. I love Jason Earl so much. I loved him in Kicking It. I didn't see Hannah Montana. I'm sorry. I, I just... I didn't go that far up the bandwagon. But I loved him in Kicking It. I loved him in that show. And it, it, it just, like... I know he wasn't going to be the main character. I knew he was already be serviceable for, for comedic relief. But even as a comedic relief set, you didn't really use him that much. Um, so I would have definitely said, like, you could have just put more Jason Earls in it, and I would not have complained. Um, but overall speaking, I think HSM season three, um, the third season of the musical, the, the series, uh, I think it was really, really good. I think, I don't think it reaches the height of the first season in terms of just like the uniformity and everything. Uh, I think all the messages they were trying to do, all the things they were trying to accomplish did work out very well and very much so I really enjoyed the season and I think they did a, you know, bang up job, like taking us a little, little summer detour to this new direction, this new, you know, um, scenery, new, new, new developments, new characters, and, you know, it all worked out for the best at the end of the day, and it only leaves you wanting more when we come back to East High next season. Uh, but for now, for me, I highly recommend HSM, the musical, season three, well, the series season, I'm going all over the place with the naming there. Um, again, I really enjoyed it, um, and I would recommend it. You can find all the episodes of, of HSM, T of High School Musical, the musical, the series, uh, only on Disney Plus. The entire third season is there live now. So if you're about to go watch the third season because of me, you can also watch all of our episode reviews, which we, which we already have completed, we've uploaded, and they're live. So whenever you finish an episode, go watch a review and then come back. Like, do a little back and forward game. Do a little back and forward. Uh, but yeah. But again, and also check out our season four predictive video once you're done with all that. So you have a whole lineup of content of me talking about High School Musical for you, for your viewing pleasure. Uh, but yeah, let me know in the comments below, have you seen the third season of, of High School Musical, the music of the series? Let's have a conversation down below. Spoiler free, of course. You don't want to spoil it for anyone else. Uh, but I feel like that's going to do it for me today, everyone. So if you're unaware, this has been What's the Two from Action Chicks reviewing uh, the third season of High School Musical, the music of the series. Spoiler free. Uh, if you want to see more of us, please subscribe to us on youtube.com slash actionings videos. If you want to see more what, uh, stuff we make on What's the Two right now as its overall show, we're currently doing rookie episode reviews, rookie feds episode reviews, and Stargirl episode reviews. We're about to start up our Stargirl episode reviews um, next week. I, our Walker episode reviews. My apologies. I, I, there's way too many shows now. My, my head's killing me. Uh, but if you only care about High School Musical, the music of the series, um... Again, if you're just watching um, this for the first time, you haven't seen season three yet, you have a lot of content to go watch um, as you're watching the show. 
Um, but if you have somehow wrapped it all up, this is the end of the road for you. Then we will be back next year for our season four episode reviews. It's still a year away. It's still some time to go before we get to see the what hopefully will be the season that breaks the internet. But until we get to that point, um, it's going to be a while away. But again, um, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for the support. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, again, please subscribe if you haven't. Like, favorite, share, ring the bell, and follow us on social media. But until we see each other again next time, for all you Wildcats out there, thank you again so much for everything. And I can't wait for you to enjoy this season if you haven't gotten to that yet, or next season when we get to come back and we get to experience this entire magic over again. Uh, but until we see each other again, please stay safe out there, be good to each other, and as always, peace out. What time is it?